what is the nature of the problem in face perception? What are the inputs? What are the outputs? What are the challenges in getting from A to B? That's computational theory. What is the nature of the representation that's attracted from, from faces? And something that didn't come up yet, but will come up extensively this lecture and next time, is are those representations different in any fundamental way from the representations we extract for other kinds of things? Like, for example, when we look at words while reading, or when we look at scenes when we walk around in the world, or when we look at objects to pick them up. Right? Are those fundamentally the same kind of representation, or are they very different in some way? Um, and related to that, is face recognition a distinct system from the rest of vision or cognition? Okay. Um, that's sort of a hardware implementation question that bears importantly on algorithm, right? So notice, if you have two totally separate parts of mind and brain, one for face recognition, for example, and another for reading words, then when you, if you know that at the hardware level, now you're trying to think about what are the algorithms involved in face recognition? Well, you already know a bunch. This algorithm can be narrow, let's take like faces and objects. This algorithm that we have to think up only has to operate on faces. It doesn't have to handle apples and toasters and buildings and cars. And that already constrains what kind of representation and algorithm you'd come up with. Right? Everybody see that? How the separateness of the systems at the hardware level constrains the way you would think about the algorithms. It tells you about the scope of operation. Okay. Um, similarly, we haven't talked about this much, but we will more probably next time and throughout the rest of the course. Are there separate components within the system? So not just is there a face system separate from an object recognition system or a visual word reading system, uh, but within any of those, are there successive stages of processing? Uh, and what are those? What are the representations and computations in each? Do they have distinct hardware implementations and so forth? OK. Uh, and of course, what computations are conducted uh, within each part of those systems? OK. So that's the sort of kinds of things we want to know. Uh, and so we'll be both thinking about answers to these questions in this lecture and thinking about methods that might give us some purchase in trying to answer them. Cool? All right. So just to be, um, you know, to have a nice uh, introspection of what we're talking about, um, I'm going to show you a bunch of um, famous faces. I, I don't get out much, so I don't know who these people are. Maybe I know two of them. But hopefully you'll recognize them. And the idea is just to, um, and by the way, when I do demos, I often don't have them on the printout because it doesn't work if you've been staring at them for a long time. <laughs> so just to get a sense of how quickly and easily you recognize faces, even when you have no basis for predicting what's coming up next, um, I'll present a series of faces. And each time, as soon as you recognize it, clap. Ready? Yeah, as, as soon as you can tell, like, is that, you don't need to know their name, you just need to know, you know, like, who that is, more or less. Like, yeah, like, if you know, oh, that's a politician, I forget what his or her name is, but I know that's, you know, this politician, okay? As opposed to, I have no idea who it is. Okay, ready? Here we go. Wow, I'm surprised at that one, okay. Oh, all my demographic predictions were off. You guys recognize the old guys and <laughs> some of the others. Anyway, my main point about this is it's pretty fast. You can sort of hear the reaction time, right? It's, it, your, your reactions were all with way under a second from the time it appeared and landed on your retina to when you knew who it was. And that reaction time includes not just how long it takes for you to recognize the face, but the extra time to say, oh, yeah, I got it. I guess I'm supposed to clap my hands now, send a signal out your arm, boom, right? So it's actually less than that. Right? So it's pretty fast. That's already a little bit of a kind of sort of clue right? about, about algorithm. Whatever's happening, it's fast. All right? OK. So um, how did you do that? You all just did it. How'd you do it? <laughs> this is the funny thing about brains. Like, we do this. We have them. We can watch them, sort of. Sometimes they give us clues about how they work, and sometimes they don't. Often it feels like just you look at the face and you know who, who that is and there's nothing more to be said about it. Sometimes you look at a face and you have a sense of how you knew. You know, like Jack Nicholson's eyebrows or something like that. It's like, oh yeah, I got the eyebrows. I knew it was Jack Nicholson, something like that. But often it just serves up. So that's why we need a science is because we can't always watch our own um, uh, mental processes at work. So we've already been thinking about how you could find out how to do this. Um, and so we're going to survey um, the methods. One is you just think about the problem. We just talked about that 
some, and we'll talk about it a little bit more in a moment. What are the inputs and outputs? Another is run behavioral experiments, more organized versions of what we just did, asking people to do stuff and getting their responses. Um, and we can do that on so-called normal subjects, which around here means MIT students. Um, you can also run them on infants and children and all kinds of other people, people with brain damage, people whose brains are getting zapped while you do it, and all kinds of other things. Um, we can monitor activity from the human brain with a whole alphabet soup of ever-increasing uh, methods that we'll talk about in detail. Um, and we can study the neural basis of the whole system in monkeys, because monkeys can recognize faces too. Uh, and though they're different from us in many ways, actually evidence increasingly suggests their face recognition system is very similar to ours. And that's a good thing because there are much more powerful methods that we can use in monkeys, like recording from individual neurons, than we can do in humans because people don't like it when you stick electrodes in their heads. Um, okay, so all of these super cool neuroscience methods um, are exciting and fascinating and kind of the hottest thing in the last 20, 25 years in this field. But I want to start with the humblest, lowest tech method around. Um, and that's first thinking and then measuring behavior, just to show you how far we can get just from that. 